Hi, Java programmers, welcome back. This is part two of our discussion about abstract classes. In part one, we figured out what method we could declare abstract, and that was speak method, since these subclasses bird, dog, and snake do speak differently. So backlass rather not implemented at all. Now, to show you how abstract method yeah, works, okay, let's start working on Eclipse. So, I have here several classes. Obviously, I have five, including the class where the main method is. Now, let me start with the abstract class first. Now, if you want the compiler to, to consider or treat your class abstract, then you have to explicitly write the keyword abstract on the declaration area just like what you see right now and let's just make this uh, pet class as simple as possible so let me just have one instance variable which is of course a type of uh, modifier using modifier private and let's have a name which is of type string and to give name a value let's use the constructor which of course accepts one parameter of type string. So whatever the value of n is, it will be assigned to name. And like what we have agreed upon, the abstract method in this class is speak. So let's declare the class, the, uh, the method rather, abstract, let's make it void and let's make it as simple as possible. So since this is an abstract class and this is an abstract method, so speak must not be implemented. So it should end with a semicolon. And la last but not least, let's have another method here which returns the string representation of this object so let's just make this return name so that's it as simple as that we're done with the abstract class pet now let's start with bird class this time so obviously bird is a subclass of pet so it must extend pet class so like what I said let's just make this as simple as possible let's not have another instance variable so let's just have bird uh, let's let's give bird just the same uh, instance variable like what we gave pet so it was name right so let's just keep it that way so to initialize the name of the bird so we will be needing a constructor which accepts one parameter of type string and n must be passed on to the constructor of the superclass by doing this statement and since bird extends pet and pet is an abstract class so bird must implement all the uh, abstract methods in the superclass otherwise bird must also be an abstract class but let's not do that let us bird implement its own speak method so let's declare the method speak and it simply says tweet simple as that so, voila, that's it. We're done with the bird subclass. Now, let's start working on dog. So, dog is one of the subclasses of pet, so it should extend pet. And, yep, we're going to do the same thing. We're not going to add any more instance variables to make this as simple as possible. Let's just have a constructor, of course, to initialize the name of the dog and it should accept one parameter 
which of which is of type string and it should be passed on to the super classes constructor by using this statement and of course since dog inherits from pet which is an abstract class so it dog must also implement the abstract method speak so let's do it public void speak and how does dog speak it's simply bark as simple as that you can have your own you know why not so dog is done and last but not least let's do snake so snake stands pet which is an abstract class so snake must implement the abstract method in pet which is speak so let's not have any more instance variables here so let's just make it as simple as possible so let's just give snake a name so by having this constructor and this n should be passed to the super class constructor simple as that and it's time for us to implement this speak method and what do you think how does snake speak let's say why not so voila we're done with the three subclasses bird dog and snake so each of the subclasses implements the speak method now let's just determine let's test if all our classes our subclasses are working let's see if these bird dog and snake really inherit from pet let's see so since I have three subclasses of the same data type pet why because bird inherits from pet dog inherits from pet snake inherits from pet so I can say that they can have the same data type right so let's apply the polymorphism here so I can declare a variable I can create an array of object here right which of the same data type which is pet so let's declare an array here let's say P so the first object I'm going to create is birds object so let's say bird and bird constructor accepts one parameter of type string which is the name so let's say Tweety that's the name of the bird the second object that I would like to create is the dog object and dog constructor accepts one parameter of type string 2 which is the name of the dog let's say doggy and the third one which is the snake object and let's name it mm, teaser what a name huh okay so we're done with the creation of array of objects so let's try to display all the names by using an enhanced for loop so let's say pet uh, pet p and simply call the to string of each object and let's try to run it let's see if it's working yes it works so all the names of the three objects are displayed as simple as that so I hope this helped you understand abstract classes hope to see you next time bye bye for now